day students. Welcome to another video tutorial. This is your teacher Jerry and I will be with you all the way to make science learning fun and easy. Before we are going to start our discussion, this is our most essential learning competency. Describes the feedback mechanisms involved in regulating processes in the female reproductive system. And we have our specific learning objectives. First, listen and discuss the function of the hormones that regulates the process in the female reproductive system. Second, describe the feedback mechanisms involved in regulating processes in the female reproductive system. And third, enumerate the disorder of the female reproductive system involving hormonal imbalance. Remember the puberty challenge wherein people shows their before and after photos in social media? These are famous actresses with their before and after photo challenge. Puberty is the term used to describe the developmental changes a child undergoes to become sexually mature and physiologically ready for reproduction. It normally begins between the ages of 8 to 14 years old in females and between the ages of 10 to 16 years old in males. At your age right now, I am sure that most of you are already experiencing different changes in your body. It is important to remember that these changes are normal and everybody goes through it. Take note that hormones play a vital role in the development of the male and female during puberty stage. Hormones are chemical messengers that the endocrine glands produce and release into the bloodstream. Sex hormones are responsible for driving puberty and sexual development. Puberty and reproductive system are controlled by the hormones of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small region of the brain which is located at the base of the brain near the pituitary gland. Puberty begins when the hypothalamus starts to release gonadotropin-releasing hormone and travels to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is a small gland under the brain that produces hormones that control other glands throughout the body. Gonadotropin-releasing hormones triggers the release of two puberty hormones at the pituitary gland, and these are the luteinizing hormone and the follicle-stimulating hormone. In females, the luteinizing hormone and the follicle-stimulating hormone will release hormones like estrogen and progesterone in the ovaries. Ovaries are two oval-shaped organs that lie in the right and left of the uterus. Luteinizing hormone stimulates estrogen and progesterone production from the ovary. Estrogen is responsible for female reproduction and secondary sexual characteristics, such as breast development, growth of body hair, flaring of the hips, it also controls in the menstrual cycle and it is also important in childbearing. Progesterone helps prepare the female's body for conception and pregnancy. Progesterone triggers the lining of the uterus to thicken to accept a fertilized egg and regulates the monthly menstrual cycle. We have learned that an average female ovary releases only one egg every 28 days. Hormones control many of the changes in the female reproductive system, and one of these is the menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle is the monthly hormonal cycle in the female's body that prepares for pregnancy. Let's learn more about menstrual cycle. The feedback mechanism in menstrual cycle. Ovulation is part of the menstrual cycle which occur each month in a sexually mature female. 
Another part is the menstruation. Menstruation is a process by which blood and other tissues are shed from the uterus and leave the body through the vagina. The menstrual cycle is divided into two cycles. The ovarian cycle includes all the events that occur in the ovary, like ovulation. The uterine cycle includes all the events that occur in the uterus, like menstruation. These two cycles are closely related to each other and so are described and referred to as menstrual cycle. Now, let's move to the different phases of the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle has four phases. First, we have the menstrual phase. Average length of a period is between three days and one week. This is when menstruation occurs. It is the elimination of the thickened lining of the uterus from the body through the vagina. Menstrual phase has different symptoms. We have abdominal cramps, tender breast, bloating, mood swings, irritability, headaches, tiredness, and low back pain. Next, we have the follicular phase. This will last for about 16 days. After the menstruation, endometrium begins to build up. Several follicles start maturing in ovaries. Only the healthiest follicle will eventually mature. The rest of the follicles will be reabsorbed into the female's body. Next, we have the ovulation phase. It happens around day 14. Ovary releases a mature egg. The egg travels down to the fallopian tube toward the uterus to be fertilized by sperm. And the last, we have the luteal phase. This will last for 11 to 17 days. The uterine lining becomes thicker and develops more blood vessels. The mature follicle that just released its egg develops into a structure called a corpus luteum. If the egg cell is fertilized by the sperm cell, the fertilized egg will be implanted in the endometrium of the uterus. But if the egg cell is not fertilized, the endometrium will break down leading to menstruation and this begin a new cycle. This is an example of a negative feedback mechanism in menstrual cycle. Follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the ovaries to release estrogen. High levels of estrogen then prevent further production of follicle-stimulating hormone. Estrogen also stimulates the release of luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland, which in turn controls the production of progesterone. High levels of progesterone will inhibit or stop the further release of luteinizing hormone. Common menstrual problems due to hormonal imbalance. First, premenstrual syndrome. Hormonal events before a period can trigger a range of side effects in women at risk, including fluid retention, headaches, fatigue, and irritability. Treatment options include exercise and dietary changes. Next, dysmenorrhea or painful periods. It is thought that the uterus is prompted by certain hormones to squeeze harder than necessary to dislodge its lining. Treatment options include pain relieving medications and oral contraceptive pill. Third, heavy menstrual bleeding. If left untreated, this can cause anemia. Treatment option includes oral contraceptives and hormonal intrauterine device to regulate the flow. And last, absence of menstrual periods. 
This is considered abnormal, except during pre-puberty, pregnancy, lactation, and postmenopause. Possible causes include low and high body weight and excessive exercise. Thank you students for listening. This is your teacher Cherry, always saying, keep learning and be safe. Thank you and goodbye.